District Apostle Kububa Soko visited Mukoshi District on a familiarization tour of the New Apostolic Church farmland in Chief Chitina of the Swaka speaking people on the 8th of October 2019. The District Apostle was in the company of District Apostle Helper Robert Maliti Nsamba, Bishop Jacob Yakomba Yamvua, some board members of the New Apostolic Church and members of staff. The District Apostle upon arrival in Mukoshi District paid a courtesy call on His Royal Highness Chief Chitina of the Swaka and Lala speaking people of Mukoshi District. During the visit, the District Apostle reassured the church's commitment to invest on the piece of land the Chief provided to the church. We are determined also to make some more investments uh, on that land so that uh, the community around there can, can benefit. Uh, uh, benefiting from our presence there as a, as a church. Meanwhile, Chief Chitina equally expressed gratitude towards the work the new Apostolic Church is doing in his chiefdom. We have now started, in fact, okay, spraying the word of God, as I can observe just from across. It's a very big uh, church that we are building. And uh, I've observed the other one from Kasakot. I've observed the other one from Kalombe, even though that I don't know from some certain areas in my chief dome. The district apostle and his entourage then left to tour and inspect the church farm, but along the way they made a stopover at Kalombe Community School where it was discovered that since 1942, when the school was founded, it only had a 1x2 classroom block, not until recently when another 1x2 classroom block was added with only three teachers to cater for grades 1 to 7. This school was founded in 1942, according to the history. And this block is the oldest block. Then this one was just added. Then since 1942, it hasn't been renovated as it is. So as a school, we've tried to, to source for some materials in trying to renovate it. As you can see, we've just put up a drainage in view of uh, at least uh, making it modern. Eh? Now we have uh, been, we are lacking cement. So we thought maybe before it is painted, let it be plastered somewhere, somewhere where there are those dents. Uh, so we have now failed to procure, but we have procured some buckets of cement, uh, paint. We have some paint. So the only problem that we have is cement. But manpower is there, uh, and uh, the local material we have. But uh, the main issue is just cement. Then the other issue is the uh, lack of teachers. We are only three of us running from grade one to seven. We had uh, one community uh, school teacher whom the PTA employed. So they, they started paying him. Then eventually, the parents couldn't manage. So he had stopped where we were for. The district apostle assured the teachers that the church notices the challenge they face and that with resources allowing, the church will assist the best way possible. The district apostle then proceeded to the church farm and along the way inspected a few congregations which only came into existence since the new apostolic church invested in Mukoshi. The number of congregations in the area has since been on an increase from not only one congregation but to more than eight congregations in the area. He then paid a visit to the Graceland Chisanga Mission Health Center, which was constructed by the New Apostolic Church through its relief organization, the New Apostolic Church Relief Organization, NACRO, and its partners, NAC Caritative. Meanwhile, New Apostolic Church Head of Public Relations and Income Generation, Nimon Mlea, explains further about the health center. Um, what we're seeing in the background is an investment uh, by the New Apostolic Church. This is Chisanga Health Center here in Kushi, constructed by the church uh, and also being operated by the church in partnership with government. The, 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 the clinic has been in existence since 2015 when it was inaugurated by her owner, the Vice President, Madam Inonge Wina. And um, this is part of the new apostolic church's commitment to the community in which the church operates in. I think we have worked with the government in a number of areas. Education, health is one of them. You may wish to know that before this uh, facility was built by the New Apostolic Church, members, not only New Apostolic Church members, but even non-members, walked long distances 
to access health services. The nearest uh, health facility is about 20 kilometers and the other one is even beyond that. So it was a challenge and uh, I think the church thought uh, uh, it, it, it's only uh, a right that they came in and help out. And um, you also may wish to know Nathaniel that this facility is saving over 4,000 families surrounding it. So it's a great milestone, it's a great milestone. And uh, where we are here, uh, this is in, uh, in, in Sanga area, and I'm sure our members and the general public may wish to know that um, uh, through the partnership between the chiefdom, that is the community and the church, uh, the, the chiefdom was able to give the church land for such activities, you know, where we have partnered with the community and see how we can help government to provide some of these much needed social services to the people. The idea is that we will not end here. I think this is phase one. You've heard the district apostle making an assurance that the church desires to do much more. And uh, I think here, uh, resources allowing going forward, we may see a health uh, uh, training center here. That's, I think, the, the plan of the church. Going forward, we may, we, we may have a training institution in health uh, 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 skills, for instance, and, and, and many more. As we go ahead, you see some of the uh, uh, projects that have been implemented by the church here in Sun. Maybe to some of our members who may not uh, have an idea of what the other future plans that the church has just away from Chisanga Mission Health Center, what, what, what are some of the plans that the church wants to embark on in similar areas of, of, of the country, both in Zambia, Malawi and Zimbabwe, to bring up such investment? I think the church desires to, 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 to actively participate in, in key sectors of, 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 economy, of the economy, for instance, in health, education, entrepreneurship and, and agriculture. I think entrepreneurship and all these uh, 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 activities are being implemented by the New Apostolic Church Relief Organization. New, NACRO is, is training New Apostolic Church members and non-members in entrepreneurship skills. You know, uh, we are also uh, being involved in education, agriculture, and in health. Where we are here, we have got the outpatient ward, we've got the maternity wing, and we can also uh, uh, we are able to, to 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 admit patients for observation. We have also built three staff houses as a church. So the key staff are resident within this facility and all that is meant to, is meant to ensure that uh, uh, quality health services is provided to the people, you know. And out of the putting up of this facility, we have been able to provide employment because we have partnered with government. The, the staff that is working here is employed by government. And you realize if this establishment was not here, then maybe those people could not have been employed. But thank God that this facility has been put by the New Apostolic Church. People have been employed here and so far so good. Yeah. And maybe lastly, what would be your message to our viewers at home concerning the visitation of a district apostle here today? I think it's an assurance, uh, just to echo what the district apostle has already committed, that the New Apostolic Church desires to do more. And I think uh, uh, the, the desire, the will is there. So they expect with... Uh, availability of resources, they expect to see much more of the presence of the church in, in, in key sectors of society, especially in the four which I've already outlined, health, education, agriculture and entrepreneurship. Because I mean, these are the core to the members uh, of, of the public out there, so that the church can also supplement government's effort in providing some of these key services to, 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 to the community. This is the admission day. The district apostle was delighted with the operations at the clinic and encouraged the members of staff to continue serving their community. He then proceeded to inspect some of the ongoing projects within the farm. Yes, it is used for sharing maize, it is used for sharing soybeans. <laughs> so, 
The district apostle then left to inspect another ongoing construction of a new apostolic church building within the district not far off from the farm and later visited Chisanga Community School. While at the school, the headmaster expressed how challenging it is to run such a school and called upon the new apostolic church to assist the school. We have no water, safe drinking water in the, in the school. The community around 300 people are drinking water from the stream. These are the samples of the type of water we are, we are consuming. We are sharing with the wild animals. It's not easy, it's not safe. If you went and see where we're drawing water, where your own grandchildren are drawing, drawing water and, 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 and helping themselves to drink water from you, you'd shed tears, my, my district apostle. The mono pump broke down on the 13th of November 2018. To date, we have failed to get help from anyone. We are crying. I'm only on your knees on the community to ask for help. If at all you can, which I believe you, 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 you will. And to that effect, things will be improved for us here as, as a school and as a community at large. Meanwhile, District Apostle Kobu Basoko expressed sadness at the current status of the school. Uh, we do not want to promise a lot. The district apostle then left Mkushi for Lusaka. Meanwhile, we had the opportunity to talk to the new apostolic church head of public relations and income generation, Nimon Mulea, who explained more concerning the importance of the church in giving back to the community, but also the investment by the church in Mukushi. Community social responsibility is an incredibly important and vital aspect to an organization which makes it operate in a way that demonstrates social responsibility. Although it's not a legal requirement, it's seen as a good practice to take into account social and environmental issues. The New Apostolic Church as a church and organization at the same time has taken a lead role in practicing community social responsibility. Today we get to know more with regards to some investments that the church has embarked on, particularly in Mukoshi. Joining me today on set is priest Nimon Mulea, who is also the head of public relations and income generation for the New Apostolic Church in Zambia, incorporating Malawi and Zimbabwe. Nimon, so it is a pleasure having you and welcome to this interview. Thank you, Nathaniel. It's, it's always a pleasure that we could have this opportunity just to uh, interact with you and also the members of the church and the general public on the key issues that uh, uh, the church is involved in. I must make mention that it's always exciting to have you uh, to discuss more about what the church is doing because we know that there's always something new that comes up. But today we want to focus on the investment that the church has gone into in Mkoshi. But before we dive into that, tell us um, why, what is, why is it important for the church to give back to the community? And, and, and like I've mentioned in my opening, uh, does the church also practice community social responsibility? It's, it's very important that um, the, the, the church uh, considers giving back to the community. Yes, the fact still remains that uh, the primary objective of the church, the new apostolic church in particular, is to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to the people out there and also to baptize them with water and the Holy Spirit. But while the church is carrying out its mandate, we are also alive to the fact that 
the well-being of the people that the church is preaching to is very, very important. And that is why uh, the church has seen it very, very important to participate in some of the social responsibility. And um, uh, from, from, from it, it's been some time now that uh, the church has been carrying out some of, uh, of, 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 of such activities. So yes, it's, it's quite important to actively participate in, um, in, um, in social responsibility. Okay. Away from uh, social responsibility, can you tell us what are some of the you know, uh, projects that the church is currently undertaking in the various parts of the country? Okay, yeah. So I must mention that uh, uh, the New Apostolic Church in Zambia, Malawi and Zimbabwe is, uh, is, is, is carrying out such mandate or is carrying out these programs through its humanitarian wing that is the New Apostolic Church Relief Organization, NACRO in short. So the establishment of NACRO is that there are a number of programs and activities that NACRO is undertaking. But primarily, I can uh, uh, point out to, to, to four areas. We are actively involved in agriculture, health, education, and entrepreneurship. There are a lot of projects that uh, the, 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 the church is implementing through NACRO. Uh, I may not mention all of them, but I'll sample a few of them. Not too long ago, let me start with Malawi. I think not too long ago, Malawi experienced uh, uh, some flooding. And I think there were a lot of people who were displaced, both our members and non-members. So the New Apostolic Church through NACRO was quite active to come to the aid of those victims, you know. And um, in some areas in Malawi also, when it comes to implementing some agriculture programs, um, there was a canal that was constructed to help uh, 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 store water for agriculture use by the members in that community. When I say the members, I'm not only referring to New Apostolic Church members, but both New Apostolic Church members as well as non-New Apostolic Church members. Back here in Zambia, there are many projects that NACRO is implementing. I can point out a few. Not too long ago, I think, uh, the district apostle was in, uh, in Luapula province, where he went to inspect uh, a project which NACRO has been, has been implementing there in, in, relation, in, in terms of a school. There's Matenda uh, School, constructed by the New Apostolic Church, and is run by the New Apostolic Church. Of course, in partnership with government. We've got a memorandum of understanding with government on how we are going to be implementing some of those projects. In Western Province, we do have um, um, a Makapaila Community School. It's also, it was also constructed by the New Apostolic Church and uh, is run by the New Apostolic Church in partnership with strategic partner, which is the government. There is Ganda Basic School, which is very soon, I think, construction may commence. But the reality is that uh, the plans have reached an advanced stage to set up a basic school in Kazungula, that is in, in, in southern province. But what is, what is so outstanding, Nathaniel, is that in all these areas I've mentioned, you would find that the key social facility, like a school, has not, was not there before the church moved in. I'll give an example in Matenda. The community around that area, they used to use the church building, you know, to, as, as a classroom. And for the church, that raised the need, and that is how they were able to put up a school there. And we didn't only construct classrooms, we also constructed teachers' houses. The same applies to uh, um, Makapaila in Western Province. Pupils would cover long distances just to go to get the nearest school, and the church saw it fit to say, "This is the future." You know, education is also. I mean, we also want to have. I remember last time when the district apostle was uh, was handing over that project, he mentioned that we want to participate in raising the literacy levels in, in, in our society. And you imagine people 
covering long distances to, us, to access education. I think that's one of the hindrances. So we, at least such facility was brought closer to them. In Ganda, I've, I've been there actually in Kazungula, you know, there's actually a stream. Pupils have to cross a stream to go to the nearest school, you know, and accidents have happened. These are the reports that we have been given as a church. Accidents have happened, you know, people have lost lives just to cross a stream. And it's, it's, it's quite dangerous for, for kids to, to, to be uh, exposed to such uh, uh, situations. So that's why the church saw it fit that they should put up a school there, you know, which will be run by the New Apostolic Church. Away from that, not too uh, far from here, in Chwombo, there's a Youth Skills Development Center, which the New Apostolic Church through NACRO constructed. And that project, we are running it uh, in partnership with government through the Ministry of Youth and Sport. We are training vulnerable youths, particularly the reformed street children, you know, in um, agriculture skills and also in entrepreneurship skills. Because the establishment is right at the NACRO farm in Chwombo, um, and it's called the Chawota Skills Development Center. You know, it was inaugurated not too long ago. We had uh, government officials gracing that uh, occasion. And um, in um, Mukushi, there's a health center that has been built by the New Apostolic Church and is run by the New Apostolic Church in partnership with government. We constructed the outpatient ward, the maternity ward, and also a mother's shelter, plus three staff houses, you know. All that is at a cost, and it's a known fact that the church gets its, uh, its resources from the generous donations uh, from the members, you know. So we have the, the New Apostolic Church has taken a deliberate stance to invest some of its resources in key social uh, uh, services or sectors such as education, health, and also um, agriculture. So yeah, those are some of the projects countrywide uh, in the three countries that the church is operating in, in Zimbabwe, Malawi, and Zimbabwe. There hasn't been a lot of uh, um, activities in Zimbabwe. I think there's been some, uh, uh, a few challenges that uh, 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 NACRO has experienced in the recent past, but I think uh, not too long ago, we have been addressing those challenges. And going forward, there's a board that has been put in place and going forward, we will see a very strong presence uh, in terms of uh, humanitarian activities um, by the New Apostolic Church in Zimbabwe. You have briefly touched on the point of uh, the Mkoshi investment. Um, we want to focus on that in this interview. Uh, can you tell us how that investment came about and why the New Apostolic Church saw it uh, fit to actually invest in that area in Mkoshi? Maybe let me start by saying, you know, the New Apostolic Church in Zambia, Malawi, and Zimbabwe has a strategic plan. This strategic plan gives details on how the church is going to operate. The strategic plan is anchored on four pillars. Self-governance, self-propagation, self-education, and self-sustenance. The church needs to sustain itself. And as a result, um, uh, there was need to come up with strategies on how the church is going to sustain itself. At the same time, meeting other commitments, such as uh, the social responsibility that we talked about earlier, evangelism, you know. So a committee was set of experts to look at available means in which the church can meet its objective. So land was sourced and fortunate was a, a, a valid, found available in Mukoshi. The land which is being owned by the New Apostolic Church in Mukoshi helps the church to meet the four pillars that I've mentioned about. Self-propagation, self-sustenance, self-education, and also um, uh, self-sustenance. Out of that project in Mukushi, the church is able to invest in uh, commercial activities for it to raise resources to sustain the operations of the church. 
So when I say about commercial activities, I'll get a bit in details. I think there is some agriculture activities taking place there. The church is able to actively participate in agriculture and the production of maize, livestock, and uh, any other. The plans is quite huge, actually. It is out of that that the church hopes to realize some of the resources to sustain its operation. And out of uh, the involvement or out of agricultural activities, the church has been able to provide employment for the community. You know, I told you earlier on that we are not only um, looking forward to go and preach to the people, but we are also looking into their well-being. You know, so it, it, it was realized and we were convinced that by participating in such activities, we are going to provide employment opportunities, not only to our members, but to the community at large in which the church operates in. We are also looking at the health of the people. I mentioned that the church has a, has a, has a health center in, 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 in Mukushi. You know, the, the facility is providing health services to the community because we want to go and preach to the people that are healthy. You know, so, and that is why that health center was established there. Actually, the, the, the facility is providing health services to over 4,000 families surrounding it. And uh, it was so sad, Nathaniel, that before that facility was, put, was established there, uh, people could lose lives, especially expecting mothers, because they had to cover not less than 30 kilometers to access the nearest uh, uh, health center. And you and I have been to Mukushi. The, 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 the location itself is quite a challenge, you know. It's, well, now it's even, you could see that there's a bit of activities taking place and the, 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 the area is slowly changing. But back then it was really a bush. Accessing it was, was, was a challenge. But that's where the church said we shall go there and invest. And right now, it's a different story, you know. So we also have an aspect of self-propagation. Before the church went, had its presence in Mukushi, we had, had an, a congregation in that area, in Tsanga area. But for, for, for the past years that the church has been operating there, we have eight congregations that have opened up. You get the point? So out of our activities there, we are not only involved in, uh, in agriculture activities and all those social activities, but we are also preaching to the people and converting them. You know? And so out of our engagements, like I said, eight congregations have opened. I mentioned another strategic pillar of self-education. We want to educate our members and also educate the community. The church intends to invest. Like I've said, we already started investing in education. But particularly in Mukoshi, the ultimate plans is that we could have even a university, if it's possible, even a college, you know, if it's possible. So those are some of the plans that the church uh, has uh, um, when it comes to the investment in Mukoshi. Uh, you have mentioned that uh, there are quite a number of activities happening uh, at, at uh, rather in Mukoshi. Um, Maybe one would like to find out, say, how did the church uh, manage to acquire such a massive investment in Mukushi as that of, of, of the farm that is there? Yeah, this was out of uh, a partnership with the locals. All those uh, strides that have been achieved, I think the church w hasn't achieved them single-handedly. There has been a lot of synergy, uh, working together, a lot of collaboration with the local people, the community themselves, because ultimately they are the, the, the beneficiaries of, of, of such investment. So then the committee that was set up went around, they zeroed in in Mukushi, they approached the relevant uh, uh, stakeholders, and one of them was the chief dom in chief team, explained to them what were our intentions. I think they were convinced that, yes, that's the right way to go. We have actually a memorandum of understanding that exists between the New Apostolic Church in Zambia and the chiefdom in uh, that's the, 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 the chiefdom in Tsanga and the chief Chitina. That memorandum of understanding spells out our relationship between the church and the community, what role we are to play and what role the community is to play. So that is how eventually the land was acquired.
We did not buy it. Mm -hmm. There was no exchange of money between the church and, 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 and the community or to the chief or wherever, no. You know, land, the uh, customary land is, 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 is in charge of, of, of the traditional leaders and I think the chief also saw it uh, 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 befitting to give part of that land for investment. All right, well, we're still talking about the investments that the New Apostolic Church has uh, embarked on in various parts of the country, not just in Zambia, but in Malawi and in Zimbabwe as well. Be aware that this interview will be posted on our Facebook page, which is the New Apostolic Church uh, Facebook, official Facebook page, rather. And if you do have any questions that uh, may be regarding to what we are talking about today, you can post in the comments in the comment section below. For now, we'll go for a very short break, but we'll come back shortly after this. The new Apostolic Church Zambia would like to announce its change in programming for the TV3 programs which air on ZNBC TV3. The programs which earlier aired at 18 hours every Thursday will now start airing at 17 hours. The new Apostolic Church and the Zambia National Broadcasting Corporation ZNBC TV3 broadcasts new Apostolic Church programs which include divine services, documentaries, news items, concerts and so much more every Thursday at 17 hours. To watch ZNBC TV3 and the new Apostolic Church programs, you need to have a Topsa decoder and search for channel 004. So make sure to tune in to ZNBC TV3 every Thursday at 17 hours. The new Apostolic Church reaching out to all people in order to baptize them with water and the Holy Spirit and teach them the Gospel of Christ. Thank you for still staying with us. We're talking about the investment that the New Apostolic Church has embarked on in various parts of the country, particularly here in Zambia, but also in Zimbabwe and Malawi. Joining me today is the head of public relations and income generation, Nimon Mulea. We are talking about the investment in Mukushi in particular. Nimon, earlier on we spoke about some of the activities that the church has embarked on in Mukushi. Now tell us, um, what are some of the visions that the church uh, has away from constructing the clinic which is already established there and many other activi activities rather taking place there. What is the vision of the church with regards to the investment in Mukoshi? So, um, we have been interacting with the experts in um, what is called land use. So the church is developing a plan on how that land is going to be used. So there's a land use that is going to be developed and this plan will spell out the future plans of, of, of that investment. Uh, there are a few that have, uh, that have uh, 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 few activities that are already taking place. Um, in terms of agriculture, each year we have been able to... You must understand that this land that the church has in Kushi is a virgin land, you know, and we have been expanding the, the, the ex developing the area. For instance, in agriculture, you know, we have been uh, 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 developing uh, areas for cultivation. You know, there's 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 also uh, uh, daily animals now. You know, at the farm, these are issues that were not there before. You know, and if you look at the clinic that is there. I think if, 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 if we may call it that phase one is in place now and I think we look forward to develop you know, much more to phase two, phase three, phase four, eventually we will we'll actualize what we are calling well, some form of a training institution for, 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 for uh, health as well as agriculture because I think that is uh, what the strategic plan entails for that place. So the, the plans are that going forward, we could have the new Apostolic Church University right in Mukoshi, or is it a boarding school, a secondary school, is it a college, you know? Going forward, the plans are that we could have uh, um, uh, a clinic, a hospital, a teaching, a teaching hospital owned by the church in Mukoshi, you know? Those are long-term plans, but what is important, Nathaniel, is that the process has started, you know, and from time to time, 
we hope that we are getting closer to realize the, the dream that is put in place. Maybe for the interest of uh, non-members of the New Apostolic Church, uh, are some of these investments that the church has uh, embarked on only catered for the New Apostolic Church members or it's open to the public? No, no. no. I think we are, we are very, very much clear and firm on that one. There is no single project which is running which is specifically for the New Apostolic Church members. Our aim is to serve the community in which the church operates in. And not just to the members? Not just to the members, it's non-members inclusive. Now, getting back to the community where the church invests into, how has the church uh, been able to work you know, in good terms with, with the community, especially with regards to issues to do with land? It could be situations or circumstances where some may be displaced out of uh, some of these investments. How has the church been able to come to the aid to such you know, affected families? Or if we can call it some of these families that have given up their land for the sake of such investments? Well, in working very, very close, I think, with um, the chiefdom, we have been able to amicably resolve such issues. And I must mention that to this day, we have not had any uh, 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 challenges to that effect, because this is a well sought out plan involving everyone, especially the community. You know, you, know, you would find that we have, we have enjoyed this very good relationship with the community. Uh, uh, before I can uh, respond to, to, to your question, let me, look, let me take, for instance, the construction of some of these projects. The community have actually come on board to offer maybe free labor. We saw it in, 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 in Mongo, in, in Makapaela, where the community were able to, to, to mobilize themselves and uh, modded blocks for, 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 for the school. So all that effort goes to show the healthy relationship that exists between the church and the community. But yes, those maybe that, uh, that uh, were found to be uh, sitting on the land which was earmarked to be given to the church, I think there was some internal arrangement between the chief and his subject that they could be relocated to another place. But even as they were relocated, they did not just go without anything. I think we saw it fit as a church to give them some form of compensation where they could start from, you know, because you see, when, when you go to a new land, you need to clear the land, you need to start clearing the fields. So you may need some resources to do that. So that's how the church came in to give them, not, not what I could call compensation, because, uh, well, ultimately we still, working with them, but maybe just some form of uh, 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 resources for them to, 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 settle, to, to help them to settle. At the end of the day, they also still get employment. Yes, yes, investment. certainly. That's, that's, that's the fact. Okay, yeah. okay now um, coming back to the partners that the church you know, works with, apart from the government, which, which are some of the key stakeholders that the church you know, uh, work with to bring some of these investments to fruition? I think the members are our strategic partners, are our major, major, major partners other than government. But like I said, that uh, um, the church is, is, is implementing these activities through NACRO. And NACRO has a number of uh, partners that they work with. One of them is NACRO Creative of Germany. You know, they've been, they've worked with us through and through from the time the, 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 the NGO was set up. And of course, a number, a number of, uh, of angels. That depends with the project we are doing. I'm aware that we have worked with Chaz. You know, we have worked with uh, the Bank of Zambia when they were when they were when they were rolling out the program about uh, financial inclusion. Because you see, as an NGO, we've got the ability to really work with the people in the remote areas. So, depending on the program that we are implementing, we have been able to partner with relevant stakeholders and. These stakeholders are quite many, and we really appreciate the relationship also that exists between the church through NACRO and strategic partners. I can single out the, the Chawata Skills Development Center in Kushi. It was really amazing the way we worked with government through the, 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 the Ministry of Youth and Sport. 
you know. And for us, that gives us uh, confidence that, yeah, working together, we can really achieve much more. Okay. All right. Now, uh, speaking about the community at large, what message do you have for our viewers back at home with regards to the New Apostolic Church and uh, its future plans to invest in the communities? I think my, me my message is uh, just to echo what the District Apostle, who is the leader of the New Apostolic Church in Zambia, Malawi, and Zimbabwe, and this is District Apostle Buba Soko, has, has, has said before, that... Uh, the church remains committed to supplement government effort in alleviating poverty, in improving the living standard of the people. So with resources uh, allowing, the, the, the community, the viewers out there, the members must expect much more from the church, from the new apostolic church. Yeah. The desire is really there, is really there. The will is really there and the desire to help is really there. As the district apostle mentioned not too long ago, he strongly believes that the church, as a church, we have an obligation to help the community, not only the members of the church, but non-members. Exactly. As we come to the end of our interview, Nimon, you have mentioned that the church is open to both members and non-members as well. How then can the general public you know, get in touch with the church in case they may have interest to be part of some of these investments that you have undertaken as a church? The New Apostolic Church in Zambia, we have an administration office which is situated in Long Acres at the corner of uh, Chisekela Road and, uh, and Kasiva, that is off um, Lubu Road in Long Acres. So members, non-members are welcome. I could also take this opportunity to gladly extend an invitation to everyone who could be watching, to our divine services. We gather on Sundays in various congregations across the country uh, from 09 hours to 10.15. On Wednesdays, we gather some congregations. They, gather, they start their divine services at 17.30, uh, whilst others, they start their, their midweek divine services at 18 hours. The midweek divine service only lasts for 45 minutes. So we want to extend an invitation to the viewers out there to join us in one of these uh, divine services for a wonderful fellowship. But yes, like I said, they are also free to come to, to, to our head office and we could interact with them. They can also check our website, that's www.nakzam.org.zm. They can actually contact us also through info at nakzam.org.zm. We have an active Facebook page. We can also interact using the official New Apostolic Church uh, Facebook page here in, in Zambia. Okay. Nimon, well, that's all the time we could accommodate you. But as, as always, it's always been a pleasure having you to come and interact with us to shed more light on some of the activities that the church has undertaken. Thank you very much, Nathaniel. But I must also mention, Nathaniel, that you see, um, the New Apostolic Church in Zambia has realized that uh, there is, the church needs to do much more for it to sustain itself and to sustain its operation. And so uh, um, there's, there's the business entity of the New Apostolic Church, which I thought I should mention about. Uh, there's a, a, a registered business entity called Lima Investment Limited. This is part of the four pillars in the strategic plan which I mentioned earlier. One of them is self-sustenance, you know. So under Lima Investment Limited, uh, this is where investments such as schools, agriculture, we also have lodges, which I'm sure you're aware that the church in, in Zambia has got lodges here in Mongu, in Zambezi, I mean here in Lusaka, in Mongu, and in Zambezi. So those fall under what we are calling Lima Investment, you know, and that is just some of the, 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 the entrepreneurship initiative or aspect the church is trying to delve into. And um, I want to also take this opportunity to mention, Nathaniel, that there has been a lot of interaction between the New Apostolic Church and the government of the Republic of Zambia through the Ministry of Education. 
because the church wants to seriously uh, consider investing in education. We will invest in education, but also we feel by so doing, we will provide, be providing a key social sector in society, which is education. So um, not too long ago, uh, our, our viewers may know retired district elder Malinda. He was appointed by government as the education secretary of the New Apostolic Church. So district elder Malinda, Malinda is the one who is uh, a go between the church and government through the Ministry of Education. And uh, with his background, with his knowledge in the education sector, he is um, 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 advising the church on how we can implement some of our ideas uh, uh, regarding education, coming up with schools and all those things. You know, uh, the, you, it's, it's not just a matter of waking up today and say we want to do this. There has to be some consultative process, you know, then you do good strategic planning, then eventually, with time, you will be realizing your, your, your intended purpose. And so in the past years, we have been really uh, been occupied with consultation with key stakeholders and also seeing what other organizations and institutions have done so that we could learn from them. And I think going forward, our members must be looking forward to see uh, some, some positive strides made in regarding to the establishment of New Apostolic Church Schools. Well, Nimon, we could go on and on talking about the wonderful works that the church undertaken, but time is not with us. But uh, maybe lastly, you can also just re-emphasize on the point on how the members could get in touch with you, especially on social media presence. Yes, um, we are happy to invite you to our official Facebook page. It's called New Apostolic Church Zambia. And uh, if you're on social media, if you're on Facebook, you could search for it, New Apostolic Church Zambia. Um, uh, they, you could find a lot of uh, New Apostolic Church Facebook pages that have been opened, but particularly for the one I'm referring to, you would, uh, the, there's the emblem as, as the profile picture that pops up, the New Apostolic Church emblem, and also the communion chalices, six communion chalices as the background picture. And I'm sure when you read through, when you read through the page, you'll be able to see that indeed this is the, the official Facebook page of the church. You like the page? and you would be able to follow uh, uh, developments, any, any developments taking place within the church. You will be able to learn more about the doctrine of the New Apostolic Church. We will be able to have an opportunity to interact with you, drop, a, drop us a message at any time, and we'll be able to respond to you. You can also find us here in Lusaka. We are situated at the corner of uh, Chisekela and, uh, and Kasiba Road, off Lugu Road in uh, Roads Park, that is in Lusaka. Uh, please feel free to visit us. You are also free to come to the 7,000 congregations that are dotted across Zambia. And I'm sure you'll find our brothers and sisters that will be glad to, to receive you. And you can engage with them and find out uh, more how you can get in touch with us at the head office. Wonderful. Well, our dear viewers, that's all we could accommodate for now. But please do remember, like we have mentioned, to always look out for some of this latest information that we post on uh, the New Apostolic Church official Facebook page. My name is Nathaniel Loa, and on behalf of the entire production crew, we'd like to say God bless, stay safe. Until next time, goodbye.